I went to court and the prosecutor wanted to file charges on me and prosecute me and the um, defender, the, my public defender said uh, there is no probable cause because 197 is poverty to me. And then now they're saying that I got to, I have to come up with another element, a worse condition in order for me to get even the 197 back. Mm -hmm. But the sergeant could care less. He wants me convicted of a crime. I'm just a picture, <laughs> picture okay. in a frame. Pause, I don't control. I paint word pictures on I don't the control the life. colors. I'm everywhere in public.
sir, if you want to go ahead and, and take a seat, I'm going to process these gentlemen's applications. I have to call my doctor, man. Sir, if you want to have a seat, he'll be back with you. Um, I saw you here when I got here, and you were talking to the sergeant. Why did you come here to? I came here to um, pick up my property mm -hmm. uh, from being released from King County because uh, they said they had probable cause for arresting me for allegedly me taking some items from 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, so he went through all my stuff, took my medication because it wasn't in the box. My, my pill box was broken. Mm -hmm. I showed him by pictures. I showed him the paperwork, uh, I um, just, uh, they kept my bag, they keeping all my stuff, saying it's related to the crime. I went to court and the prosecutor wanted to file charges on me and prosecute me and the um, defender, the, my public defender said uh, there is no probable cause. She called it something like a conversion or coercion. Mm -hmm. uh, they was using one thing to try and catch me up with the other one. And the judge said, I agree, exactly. There is no probable cause for them holding you here, so I'm releasing you on your own recontinence. So that it wasn't a lawful detainment, it's what they call like that it was no reason, they just detained you to They detained me. They they thought they had probable cause, yeah. but the judge said no, there is no probable cause. And so, then the judge let you go and they kept your stuff. They yes, Bellevue's keeping my stuff. Um, you see how hard it is, even the medication after I bring um, tons of paperwork saying it's my medication, my doctor, my pharmacy, my name on the bottle. They see that it was stepped on, my bottle's cracked, there's no way I can hold medication in it. It'll crumble up, I'll lose it yeah. all over the place. Somebody could find it and take it and get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Taking my medication because my medication is very strong. Mm -hmm. And um, now I um, don't have medication because my insurance doesn't want to give me a refill. It's too expensive for me to buy. I'm living in poverty. Um, they just cut out my 197. The only money I was getting, I'm an electrician by trade. I'm, I'm in a lawsuit with SSI because they owe me $96,000 mm -hmm. and they don't want to pay me any of the money I worked for since I was 17 years old. You know, to them, my symptoms is not, you know, good enough. I'm not hurt bad enough. They don't see my um, disability as a disability. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I'm, I'm living in property, which pushes me, you know, pushes me toward doing things or sometimes or even thinking about it. I'm surprised I've lasted this long living in property because 197 is property to me. And then now they're saying that I got to, I have to come up with another element, a worser condition in order for me to get even the 197 back. How was the service when you got here? Was they, they were they friendly, helpful? The I lady, the, the first lady, was, really was very friendly, very helpful because she takes medication herself. Mm -hmm. But the sergeant could care less. He wants me convicted of a crime. Um, he wants, even if it takes two, three years before they give me my stuff back, he wants to see if they're going to file charges on me when the judge release me and said that there was no probable cause for the cop arresting me in the first place. He, yeah, you saw he was very standoff, he was very, you know, unwilling till he found out. He said, you heard him say, um, I'll give you, your stuff is just holding your backpack and your bike, so I'll give you that back. But the medication, um, you know, that's another thing. I gotta wait till the other cop gets off work or comes here and, 
you know, I shouldn't have to do that when I brought all the necessary paperwork yeah. and the bottle to my prescription. Neither wait. How long have you been waiting here? Uh, I've been waiting here for, I've been just been here for about an hour, two hours. Two hours, you know. wow. Yeah, because I think I have been here for one hour. And I still before. doesn't have, I still don't have nothing back, yeah. you know. So, I, I still have nothing. I'm, I'm just so distraught right now, you know, my head is spinning. You know, I, I got to go home and um, um, use my roommate's phone again and, and call my doctor and tell him what's going on. And, you know, they got to replace my medication because it ain't like I'm making a report and saying I lost it. They have it. They just won't give it back. Yeah. It hasn't even been the case. Okay, uh, back Okay, and I'll, I'll just. Our doctor, somebody was having to charge you more. Um, medication. <laughs> if they want to call off, that would be My doctor? Yeah, I, I'm happy to talk to him if you need those meds, but the thing is that we can't identify him in that. Outfit. Okay, okay. Well, I'll take my backpack and my bike. Okay, I'll And I'll handle the medication. Okay. Are these yours? You want these back? Um, sure. Yeah, these are mine. Okay, I'm gonna take one. All right. Ready to go to the stuff back. Sign this real quick. Okay. And I actually it's think like uh, that. Post it up. We'll have to see it. Yeah, I will. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a black man with cameras.